Bill, I actually, I appreciate what you're trying to do and yeah. I respect your journey that you've been on and, and I just think there are a lot of issues around it. I wanna bring you in, Craig, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. this ethical dilemma. Let's say it does work for people who can afford it. Then what? <laughs> we have to rethink what it means to live a normal human lifespan, right? If we're suddenly living twice as long or an extra 50 years, we have to start thinking about overpopulation in a more real way. We've got to think about restricting the number of new births to weigh out death. I mean, there will still be death, right? There will be accidents. There will be causes of death, uh, infectious disease, things that we can't necessarily control. Would you want to have the same job for 120 years? Or do we have people going back to school and retraining for new things? Um, these and do we have the aging at age 16 or 25 or 45 yeah. or 65? Like, and, and I want to I want to ask you, Bill, because how do you this concept of reversing or stopping aging? Do we all just end up being 25, running around, and we're hanging out with our kids, you know, drinking people, beer? <laughs> people people aren't aware of like if people spend as much time in hospices and nursing homes and assisted living homes as I have. People would be more aware of the fact that. The real problems exist now. Nobody in 200 years from now is gonna say, let's ban the cure for aging because it's causing all kinds of problems. The problems are now. There's a lot of very depressed, unhappy people in these homes who can't take care of themselves. And we just don't know about it because they're all locked up in these, these houses. They're not locked up. These are people choosing to have a meaningful, beautiful way to finish the last stage of their life. These are, you know, it's not a question of, look, I appreciate that you are a visionary. I appreciate that you are trying to improve human lives. That's wonderful. My question is how you're going about doing it. They are locked up. I've been in enough of these places. No, they can't get out. Uh, but the uh, uh, safety, there was an FDA approved study where actually people had uh, immune responses and actually got sick and almost died. And there's been some clinical studies with gene therapy, FDA approved, where people did die. But I've looked at these studies. The people that were involved in, in these studies, the scientists and medical doctors, actually did some pretty dumb things. I am in disbelief that some of these things, even though they're FDA approved, were done by uh, dumb errors and stuff. I've made certain that the study that Mobella Gene Therapeutics is doing is covering every possible angle to ensure the safety. That's the number one most important thing is safety. And nobody's gonna get sick or die on my watch. And so to finish this off on a really light note, if you two had to pick an age at which to just arrest wow. aging, what yeah. would be the age you would, would stay at? I feel like right around 30. Because I felt like I had enough experiences. And physically, you still feel Physically, I still felt good, no but I had some experience and, and some wisdom. I think that was a pretty... Late 20s, 30s. Yeah. yeah. And what I think it's think? an interesting conversation for people to have in their own mind. But just I think. would say mid, probably mid-20s, because it's before things started to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Any extension of life could be cool with all that, that added experience and uh, knowledge. If nothing else, this shows the world how much we are learning about genetics and how everything plays such a huge role. We've learned so much more than when we were in medical school, yeah. for instance. I want to thank Bill and Craig so much for being here, thank offering you your opinions. Really interesting.